The name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, I'd like to welcome you to the city of David Online, where the love of God reigns, where dreams come true, where legends like you and I are born. And surely, as the Lord lives, the testimony that you're going to share tomorrow is being worked upon by God right now. I bring you also greetings from my sweetheart, Pastor Shiju. Shall we pray, please? With my hands lifted up, with my hands lifted up, and my mouth filled with praise, and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, O Lord, I will bless you, O Lord. 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 With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless you, O Lord. Eternal Covages, we bless your holy name. We give you all the glory that you deserve, all the honor and all the adoration. We approach your throne of grace, O Lord, thanking you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for fighting our battles. Thank you, King of Glory, for putting the devil to shame. Thank you for withdrawing our names from the book of the dead. Thank you, O Lord, even for delivering us from the power of the grave. Thank you, King of glory, O Lord, for the great and mighty things that you have in store for us. Thank you for a glorious destiny that is above and ahead of us. Father, O Lord, we pray that in the next few minutes you speak to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Encourage us, bless us, transform our lives for the better, if need be, admonish us. By the end of this meeting, Father, take all the glory, take all the honor, take all the adoration. And please let every one of us have our own personal testimonies in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Once again, I'd like to 
uh, invite you to this um, or welcome you to this book review. We have been studying Psalm 91, which we know now is one of the most important Psalms uh, for this hour, for this season. It's a covenant of peace and is a comprehensive insurance policy with all the premium paid. It's an all-risk insurance by our God, our Lord and Master uh, Jesus Christ. It was put in place by God and Jesus paid the premium uh, and is essentially for the protection and the blessing of his children, those that are in a covenant relationship with him. My prayer is that before we end this session, by chance, you are not already in a covenant relationship with God. One way or the other, you will be grafted in, in Jesus' mighty name. This insurance policy guarantees a hedge of all-round protection, and it has loads and loads of benefits. And um, we've written about eight books on Psalm 91, uh, the first one being God's comprehensive insurance policy. We have um, finished with the review of that. Um, and all these books are available online and at our local stores in Nigeria. Uh, but essentially, they are on all the um, platforms uh, online. Um, we have the second book called The Snare of the Fowler. We have finished the review of that one also. And right now, we are reviewing uh, book three, which is Between the Mother Hen and bad mamas. I'd like to read Psalm 91, verse 4. Psalm 91, verse 4. Uh, and I'd like to encourage you to please read uh, this psalm as often as you can. Verse 4, which is what we're focusing on, says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. May God deliver us from the snare of the fowler and the noisome pestilence pestilence, especially this pandemic called COVID-19 in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, that verse says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. From our previous studies, we have learned uh, while studying the meaning of cover, that there is uh, a difference between the physical covering and a spiritual covering. And um, from the examination of various scriptures, we found out that um, the spiritual covering is better, is more comprehensive than the physical covering. The physical covering is also important, but if you are under the shadow of the Almighty, it encompasses all kinds of needs, all kinds of coverings, and it covers you from any kind of exposure. So, in as much as the physical covering is okay, we need to know that the spiritual covering is comprehensive. It covers every kind of thing. And as regards the present pandemic, the Bible says that the horse is prepared for the battle, but safety is of the Lord. The horse has to be prepared. And the relevance of that to us is that you need to follow all the protocols. Using your face mask, washing your hands, social distancing. And once there is any kind of symptom, seek medical attention. Please don't hide it. You're supposed to be your brother's keeper. You must have somebody you can call. And of course, in church, we have a hospital. And you can call anybody. They will bring it to our attention. Please, there's a time when home treatment is not adequate. So it says the horse is prepared for battle. It must have its nose gauze and all that prepared for battle. But safety is of the Lord. That means that even if there is preparation, it is God that determines who survives it and who does not. That is where the spiritual cover is very, very important. But you must prepare. So I pray that, you know, we'll catch the wisdom in that scripture in Jesus' mighty name. Back to Psalm 91 verse 4. It says, he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Now, God is making reference to a bird. 
And the first bird that comes to mind is the mother hen. The mother hen. Luke 13 and 34. Luke 13 and 34 says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, why killeth the prophets and stoneth them that are sent unto thee? How often will I have gathered their children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and you would not? And God is pointing us to the characteristic of our mother hen that we see. He says that if you study the mother hen, and its attributes and characteristics, then it's likely for you to have a better understanding of the attributes and characteristics of God. And we have done extensive study of the characteristics of the mother hen. And we're going to continue in these studies. My prayer is that God will speak to us through this teaching in Jesus' mighty name. However, today, before we jump into the characteristics of the mother hen, the way the Holy Spirit wants to address this segment is to use the style of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. In most of his teachings, if you ask him a question, he will answer by asking you a question. Or he will pose a case study or talk to you with a parable so that you can go back and think about it. It's not all the time that we give direct answers. So today we're going to be asking a lot of questions. It's going to be a campaign. And I believe that as we answer these thought-provoking questions, we have a deeper understanding of what God is talking to us, you know, for this season. There are going to be a lot of incisive questions. So sit tight, put your seat belts on, and come along with me on this journey. The theme of this series of teachings that we're starting today is um, uh, is um, of course you saw it in the banner. How deep is your love? How deep is your love? And we're going to go straight off by asking questions. The first question in answering that main question: How deep is your love? Is that have you ever fallen in love before? Or are you presently in love? And how does it feel when you are in love? You know, these questions will be posted on this platform. And after the meeting, it will be on YouTube, to be on uh, Instagram, to be on Facebook. And you can come back and write these questions down. And you can answer immediately the chat room but your answers will be rewarded. This is the time for Iguila, uh, Iguila offerings, Iguila, Iguila um, gifts. And you know that an Iguila gift is a major gift. There are going to be all kinds of gifts for those that answer well. But please, let's answer truthfully and you know, to the question. So the first question, like I said, is have you ever fallen in love before? Or are you present in love. Tell us your experience. How does it feel when one is in love? How deep is your love? Now, question number two. How do you measure the depth of your love for your friends, for your children, and for your spouse? How do you measure the depth of your love? If you can't keep up, you can always go back to these questions or answer on the side, but there's going to be a campaign with these questions. Question number three. What is the difference between true love and fake love? There is true love and there is fake love. What is the difference? I want to focus briefly on fake love from our book, Finding True Love in a Love Recession, which is one of these series, and we'll get there soon. Finding True Love in a Love Recession. From that book, which I pray you would pick up, these books are not too expensive, and it will benefit you. The Bible says that you need to prosper your soul. As you prosper your soul by studying the Bible, and reading all these materials and coming for this kind of meeting, then it will be refound prosperity. 
The Bible says that don't let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. And meditate on it day and night so that you can have true success. So it's important. Read those books. Go online. It's on Kindle. It's on all our platforms. And it's available at various stores and also in church. So what is fake love? Fake love, I believe, is exploitative. It's calculating. Is logical love using your spouse or friend to climb the social ladder? Is logical love? You say you are in love because of what you can get out of it. And I'd like to pose a question. Question number four Is it truly possible for a 20 year old girl to truly fall in love? and marry a wealthy 90-year-old billionaire. We'd like to hear from you. A 20-year-old girl says, I'm smitten by the love of a very, very wealthy 90-year-old billionaire. Can that be true love? I'd like to know. Please answer these questions. Question number five. Have you ever experienced fake love? Please tell us about it. You can answer in the chat room or you can go on all these platforms and give us a comprehensive answer. Have you ever experienced superficial love, fake love, logical love? Tell us about your experience. You know, fake or superficial love is usually fleeting. It's not long lasting unless, of course, if you are deluded. And at the end of it, it is usually nothing to write home about. It's full of regrets. Are there examples in the Bible? Of course, the classic example that I'm sure that we all know is the story of Samson and Delilah. I believe that story is in Judges 16, 1 to 21. Samson and Delilah, Judges 16, 1 to 21. You know, that kind of love is one-sided. Insincere, heavily exploitative, very deceptive, and ending up in disaster. And our prayer today is that if perchance you are entangled in any kind of relationship, be it emotional or business, that is fake, God will open your eyes today and show you a way of escape before you drown in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Question number six. You know, I told you that today we want to teach by asking questions. You need to think before you answer these questions. And then we'll come together and answer the questions comprehensively. Question number six. What is the difference between the love of, for a girlfriend and the love for a spouse. Can you compare the two? Mind you, this question is only for those that have experienced the two sides of the coin. You are once a bachelor or spinster, you fell in love and are now married. So tell us the difference between the love that your spouse showed you as a girlfriend and the love that you have right now. Is that really a difference? Please try and tell us. Now, in that light, we want to look today at the marriage vows that we exchange when we get married. By now, you should be able to re recite it. You know, it's a vow, it's a covenant. You need to remember. And I encourage every one of us to go back to those marriage vows if you're married. You say, I take you to be my lawfully wedded wife or husband to have and to hold from this day forth for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part, according to God's holy law. Mm. How time flies. I exchanged that vow with my sweetheart about 31 years ago. You know, the marriage vow is a covenant. And there's a difference between a covenant and a mere promise. 
A covenant is an ironclad vow that reeks of commitment and sacrifice. And this kind of love is like a rose, it's like a rose. The rose has petals, sweet petals, nice smell, but it still has thorns, usually sometimes bitter and sometimes sweet. But you need to stick with it and enjoy, and not endure, enjoy every inch of the relationship till death do you part. I pray for long life and prosperity for all those that are married in Jesus' mighty name. For better, for richer, in health, in sickness. You see, it's easier to love and cherish for better, for richer, in health, and stick with it till death do you part. But today, the satellite is on loving and staying committed, even when it's getting worse. When the labor of the olive is failing, there's no business, there's no money. When there are challenges all around you, and I pray not, in times of sickness. You can get a reflection of what I've just said from Habakkuk chapter 3 and 17. Habakkuk 3 and 17. You see, it's easier for your love to be strong and vibrant in times when things are better, in times of plenty, when both of you are in good health. Of course, this is not to say that when things are going well, there cannot be challenges. There can be solid challenges because in some relationships, it is the good times, the riches that brought the problem. Do you have an example of this? For example, when a husband is not wealthy, he's always at home. But now that the wealth has come, he's painting the city red alone. That shouldn't be. Or when the wife was still dependent on the husband as the breadwinner, she was quite submissive. But now that the tables have turned and she's highly successful, highly sought after, high flying business mogul, an employer of labor, then she throws submission away and becomes a cock. Does it happen to anybody? Have you ever heard of anybody that has this character flaw? Say flaw. Please let us know. Let's learn from this. You know, I remember the story of a couple. Uh, the started off as students in London, and they got married. And you know that when you're abroad, you know, the husband will help naturally, you know, the woman in the kitchen, uh, while the woman is making dinner, the husband, you know, can be washing the dishes. They were, you know, sharing the chores. Then they came back to Nigeria. And the husband became very, very successful. And every help, for the chores stopped. And each time the husband will come to the, the, the wife will come to the husband and say, darling, uh -uh, why are you doing like this? When we were in London, when we were in London, you were, the man would say, hey, please stop all this London. Which London? I don't want you to, to, I don't want to hear when we were in London again. Is it Oshapa London or Kitupa Waterside? I don't want to hear when we were in London again. Such things do happen. Please. Let's help ourselves so that we can fulfill the law of Christ. The Bible says that bear each other's burdens so that we can fulfill the law of Christ. Well, people of God, today we're talking about how deep is your love. The test of true love is when the going gets tough. And this is when you can measure the depth of your love. You can't smell the flavor of a tea bag until you throw the tea bag inside very hot, boiling water. Then you'll be able to distinguish between the various types of tea. You have the top tea, you have the bongo tea, you have the tekli tea, you have the uh, gray, you have the Scottish blend, you have the Lipton tea, you have the twinings, 
You have Yorkshire tea. These are various kinds of teas. They can look beautiful outside. It can be well packaged, but you don't know the aroma it comes with until you throw it inside hot water. The same thing with love. It is when the going is tough that you know who truly is in love with who. Now, this segment is not only for married people, but anyone who has ever loved before. And I'd like to continue with that questioning. Question number eight. Can you still love when the going gets tough? When health is failing? When one is faced with terrible disappointment and there seems to be no way out? Do you have a personal experience when you have loved in spite of challenges? Please answer on our platforms. Let iron sharpen iron. Let's know about your experience. And of course, there is an Aguila gift waiting for you. Question number nine. What should one do if one husband or wife or a member of the family comes down with an infectious disease? I pray not. And the only thing that can save their lives is if one holds their hands, hugs them tightly, and tells them comforting words from the scriptures that will revive them. What should one do? How far can you go? It's an infectious disease. How far can you go? How deep is your love? Question number 10. Can you still love if in the midst of the years of marriage, your spouse, I pray not, becomes impotent and cannot guarantee having children? Can you still truly love them and accept them for who they are? Is there anything like that? Is there still anything like that? Do you have any experience? Please let us know. The more we answer the questions, the better our chances of winning the Iguila. Question number 11. If you've been planning a family holiday for the last two years to Dubai or to the south of France for Christmas, and on the day you are billed to travel, it turns out that your husband is called upon to travel out of town to pray for an ailing member of the church that needs a miracle touch and ask for permission to go, even though the holiday will be disrupted, meaning that nobody will be able to travel and the holiday will be canceled. What would be your reaction? Would you still love him? Hmm. Question number 12. Imagine you have shares in the bank that you've been saying you've been saving for the past 20 years. And then your brother-in-law, who has no one else, comes to you to depend on you and calls you that he cannot afford to pay his rent for this month. He asks you for support. And for you to help him, you would have to break your savings. What would you do? What would you do? You break your savings for you to support your brother-in-law. What would you do? We'd like to hear from you. Question number 13. If you are going on a vacation at Obudu Katu Ranch with your family and some colleagues, and, and suddenly your wife, I prayed on, and friend from work sleeps just on the edge of a cliff, and they are hanging on with one hand each, who do you say first? Your wife or your husband? who are born again Christians, or your colleague who is an unbeliever? Who would you go for first? Question number 14. Tunde has a friend called Laju, who had been warning him to renew his driver's license and it had long expired. To the frustration of Tunde, Laju never listened. 
Today now gets a call at 11 p.m. from Laju that he had been arrested at by, by LASMA, by the authorities, for driving with an expired license. Do you think Tunde should go and rescue his friend immediately or wait until morning? If you were Tunde, what would you do? Please let us know. Final question for today. Question number 15. Remember, you can always go back to these questions and deal with them properly. If a husband and wife had been married for 20 years, and the husband has been constantly unfaithful, and one night they are faced with an intruder who has a last bullet in his gun, which or, or, or should, should the wife take the bullet for the husband or the husband for the wife? Should the wife take the bullet for the man or the man for the wife. People of God, tonight we're asking questions, incisive questions. We want us to think deeply. Think about what you have said or the questions we have posed tonight. Let us know and let us answer truthfully and speedily and that way we'll be learning. As we begin to round up, there are some biblical case studies in measuring depths of love. Do you know any? Why don't you answer in the chat room? I found a few. Second Samuel 23, 14 to 17. Second Samuel 23, 14 to 17. David was in the stronghold and garrison of the Philistines. And David said, with a longing, he wasn't even addressing anybody, he says, oh, that someone will give me a drink of water from the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate. So, three mighty men, mighty warriors of David, they heard this and they broke through the camp of the Philistines, endangering themselves just to draw water from the well of Bethlehem, and they broke through back. They took it, they brought it to David. David could not drink it. He says, far be it from me that I should do this. Is this not the blood of men who went in jeopardy of their lives? He couldn't drink it, and he offered it as a libation unto God. People of God, how about the old saints that have gone ahead? Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11 says, they did not love their lives unto death. They believed in their cause. They did not love their lives unto death. Another case study that we can look at is Naomi and Ruth. That is the most popular one. And I commend the book of Ruth to you for you to read. It's a short book. Ruth 1, 16 to 17. Ruth 1, 16 to 17. The Bible says, But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you where you go. I will go where you lodge. I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. Hmm. There will I be buried. He says, may the Lord do this to me. You know, he says, may the Lord do this and so to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. He says, till death do us part. How about Elijah and Elisha in 2 Kings 2, 1 to 8? Elijah tried hard to shake off Elijah on the day he was supposed to go to heaven. But Elisha, Elisha stuck to his gun. It was Elijah that tried to shake off Elisha. Elisha stuck to his gun. He said, I want a double portion of your anointing. And I'm willing to pay the price. 
it was a tough price to pay because Elijah first went to Bethel. Elijah followed him. From Bethel, you know, he went to um, Jericho. This man did not give up. He followed him. And each time, Elijah told Elijah, stay here. I said, no way. I will not leave you. I will not go. Then he went again to Jordan. He was committed. He believed in the cause. He followed him until he got what he wanted. My prayer is that God will do even much more for you as you hold on to your dream in Jesus' mighty name. The distance between Bethel and Jericho that this man walked was more than 107 kilometers. You can imagine 107 kilometers stuck on him. He forgot all his comforts, stuck on him. How about David and his wife, Michael or Mishael? Saul told David that, look, the bride price is a hundred first kings of, of, the, of the Philistines. Go and kill a hundred Philistines. <laughs> but to show the zeal and the love that David had for Saul's daughter, he killed 200. He says, no, not 100. 200. I'll go the extra mile. That story is in 2 Samuel 18, 25 to 27. 2 Samuel 18, 25 to 27. How about Jacob and Rachel? He served 14 years for Rachel. Did not touch Rachel for 14 years. And he says, it seemed like a few days because of his love for her. How about the widow of Zarephath? The widow of Zarephath, that story is in 1 Kings 17, 7 to 16. 1 Kings 17, 7 to 16. You know the story. She literally gave up her life. She said that, look, this is my last meal. But the prophet said, surrender that food. If I surrender it, death is looming. He says, surrender it first. Give it up unto God. Challenge God, and then we'll see what will happen to you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they entered the fire. Sometimes God can deliver you from the problem, but he can deliver you also in the problem. He says, when you go through fire, it will not burn you out. The rivers, it will not overflow you. They went into the fire. They went to the extreme. How do you measure the life of such men and such women. Next week, God willing, if the Lord tarries, we'll find out from ourselves, we'll talk about real life experiences. Some people might say, all oh, these things happen in the scriptures. How about real life experiences we want to know? So if you have any real life experience, be ready to share it with us. But well, please, let's address all those questions that we have put up on our various platforms. And I believe that as you are addressing them, the Spirit of God will be ministering to you in Jesus' mighty name. Well, if you're here, you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. Ah, it's tough. It's tough. You can't make it. You might, in your eyes, think that everything is okay, you're successful, but true success is knowing God and his will and purpose for your life. Because there's a day that we're going to stand before God to give an account of what we have done here in line with the original assignment that I've given us. My prayer is that you'll not be part of those that will be tongue-tied on that day in Jesus' mighty name. So the call is for those that want to have a relationship with God. You want to experience him. You want to know the depth of the love of God for you. And you want to show him love. How can you, as a bride of Christ, marry someone that you don't have a relationship with? You don't spend time with. You have never had speak. It's going to be hard. How can he marry you? Let's think about it. You don't have any relationship. You don't speak to him. You have not heard his voice. 
And you want to marry? Ah, I don't know. But that can change tonight. By just saying this little prayer, that you'll enter into a covenant relationship with God and you'll experience God going to any extent to support you. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, then repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. With my heart, I believe that it's because of me that Christ was sent to this world. I surrender all my struggles even unto you. I acknowledge my faults. Please forgive me. I plead the blood of Jesus to cleanse me from every kind of unrighteousness. Please write my name in the book of life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and defend me. Support me. Give me my own personal testimony. And I promise I will testify. If you said that prayer, then please, that's the number scrolling on the screen. Please call those numbers. And they will tell you more about what you have done. And if you don't have a Bible believing church to attend, please join any of the branches of the Redeemed Church of God and they will receive you well. You will grow and God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you. We bless you. We glorify thee. Thank you for speaking to us. King of glory, Lord, we thank you for those that you have touched their hearts that have come to you. Father, we pray that you'll accept them in the beloved in Jesus' mighty name. King of glory, the rest of us, as we walk with you on this journey, reveal the depth of your love even unto us and lead us aright as to how we can reveal our own love even unto you. We bless you, we love you. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. We love you. See you next time. Praise God, praise God. What a wonderful teaching. Let's just pray for our pastor. The Bible says that the general soul shall be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Our pastor will pray that even as you continue to labor over the world for us on weekly basis and daily basis, that God will continue to enlarge your coast and make you rich in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Brethren, so it's time for us to give and the time to really know or to test how deep one's love is, is how you give. Uh, if you look at Mark chapter 12, Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44, Jesus Christ sat in the temple and he was measuring the love that people have for the things of God through their giving. And the Bible said that the rich who came and they were given empty sum of money, quite large sum of money. And then there come a widow who dropped two small coins. And in verse 43, the Bible said that so Jesus Christ called his disciples to himself and said to them, As surely I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, a whole livelihood. And as I was just going through this particular verse, and my, something was telling my spirit that this widow here exhibited a type of God. If you look at John chapter 3, verse 16, God gave everything. So Jesus Christ was looking at that. Deep love. So tonight is another time for us to show deep love for God in how we give. And I receive in my spirit that don't make your giving relative. Make it personal. And what I mean by that is that don't say, well, if I give... 100,000, after all, if everybody in this church give 100,000, this what is going to amount to. 100,000 is okay for me. That is relative. Give us how we are blessed. And we all know that we have various projects, we have various channels that we can give to in the church. 
The flagship is the Trinity Towers. We have Pili Stripes, Touching Tomorrow. And of course, our tithes, which is mandatory, and our love offerings, CSR. So as you prepare your offering tonight, and you can see um, how you can give that is being scrolled on your screen, you can go to the website and go to e-giving. You see how you can give there. You can give through the USSD code. And you can also give through your bank transfer. And of course, I will advise that you or encourage you to actually uh, save City of David and the various uh, channels of giving into your bank transfer. And as you do this, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your children, even as they show true deep love for you tonight. Just like that widow that gave two coins all that she had. And Father Lord God, that even as our children pay their tithes today, as they give to Trinity Towers, oh Lord God, we enlarge their coast in the name of Jesus. That the seed they are sowing today will come back to them in several folds in the name of Jesus. And whatever they are giving today, oh Lord God, will be the smallest they will ever give. And this giving today will be a seed of testimony. Thank you, Lord Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Signs and wonders, we serve a miracle working that we serve. 